What's good guys, Austin here, and today I have a quick review of this, the Rectronics RecPad 10. It's a 10-inch tablet that you might mistake for an iPad, but there's one catch. It's half the price. Oh yeah, and it runs Android. So let's get into it. Now, there's no getting around it. This looks just like an iPad. Other people thought it was an iPad until they got a little bit closer, and for good reason too. It has almost identical dimensions to the iPad Air 2, except for it being just a little bit thicker and a little bit heavier. The most obvious difference is on the back, where you have the Rectronics logo and the RecPad branding. The speakers are also located on the back, which isn't the best position, especially considering how quiet they are. The rear camera is 8 megapixels and records 1080p video, but you're not going to want to use it. Seriously. On the right side, you get your sleep-wake button and volume rocker, which both work fine and have a tactile feel. And on the top, you get everything else. A headphone jack, micro USB port for charging, and a micro SD card slot, which will let you expand way past the internal 32 gigs of memory you're provided with. On the front, there's a 2 megapixel camera, which again, you're not going to want to use. Right below that is a 9.7 inch screen with a resolution of 2048 by 1536 the same retina display you use on the iPad. The screen is really nice. It's a nice resolution for the size, so text looks sharp, and the colors look accurate enough to me. They're not oversaturated or washed out or anything. It looks pretty good. My only complaint here is that for some reason, I can't adjust the brightness whatsoever. I'm not sure if this is a problem with all of them, and luckily mine is set to an appropriate level, but it's still pretty annoying. So moving on to the performance, this is where we see the, uh, the value aspect creep in. Luckily, you get a really solid build and a pretty premium feeling design, but the performance leaves a little bit to be desired. The RecPad 10 is using a Cortex A17 processor, which is about two years old, an Amali T764 graphics chip and two gigs of RAM. Now, none of these components probably sound familiar, so here's a quick benchmark. Running Geekbench 3, the processor clocks in a single score core of 692 and a multi-core score of 1914. Now, these scores aren't completely terrible, but they're not particularly good either. So how does this actually factor into everyday performance? The RecPad is running Android 5.1, and it can be a little rough around the edges sometimes. For the most part, performance is good enough though. It's sort of like warming up a car. Some apps take a decent amount of time to load up for the first time, but once you're actually in it, it runs okay. It's definitely not unusable and you can run every app, but it definitely does get a few hiccups just to remind you that you only paid about 250 bucks for this tablet. Surprisingly though, you can run games on this. Simple 2D games work flawlessly without any problems whatsoever. Um, I've been playing a decent amount of Pocket Mortys and I haven't run into a single problem. If you like playing strategy games or RPGs, this will have more than enough performance for you. But more intense games are a little bit of a different story, and surprisingly not in a bad way. I'm able to play games like FIFA 16 and Asphalt without too much frustration. I've logged at least 10 hours on Asphalt, and while performance isn't perfect, it hasn't driven me to the point where I couldn't play on it anymore. Now, I personally like playing games like this on tablets because I can appreciate their graphics even more, especially on the bigger high resolution screen. And I think the only caveat with more intensive 3D games is that you will encounter drop frames from time to time and eat through your battery life. Again, it's not the best thing ever, but it's passable. Now, speaking of the battery life, the RecPad 10 packs a pretty solid 8300 milliamp hours. I can get through a couple days with light usage and in total probably get around 8 hours in total when using it consistently throughout the day. If you're planning on using this to play games though, you're going to be reaching for the charge a little bit more than you would like. Which leads to the conclusion. Don't buy this if you want to play intensive games on it. It's decent for simpler 2D games, but for everything else, just spend the extra money and buy a faster tablet. But if you just want a nice looking tablet for the simpler things in life like streaming Netflix or viewing PDFs for class or browsing the internet, this isn't awful for the price. At $250, you mostly just get an awesome aluminum bill, but you can also use this tablet for other things. It's really a good product for people who aren't going to be using their tablet all the time, but just want one to have from time to time. If you want to pick one up, I'll have the pricing and availability down in the description. And actually, if you want to get a 10% discount, just hit me up on Twitter and I'll send you a personal coupon code to pick one up. All my social media links are down in the description. Anyways, hope you all enjoyed the video. And if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to the channel because I've got a lot more content on the way. As always, thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you in the next one.